Two crossing points on the border between once bitter enemies Eritrea and Ethiopia have been reopened today after a war closed the boundary more than 20 years ago. The two nations spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the war which lasted from May 1998 until June 2000. And despite both sides suffering tens of thousands of casualties, only minor border changes resulted. Today's reopening follows a peace deal which was signed between the country's two leaders in July, restoring diplomatic and trade relations. Our Ethiopia correspondent Emmanuel Gunza reports. It's a dash to greet long lost loved ones and emotions run high as families and friends meet for the first time in decades. People here have been waiting for more than 20 years to be reunited. And for Eritrea and Ethiopia to end their bitter border dispute that has cost both countries so much, many had given up hope of ever seeing this day. I met my mother and sister after 24 years. I can't explain my emotions. For my brother's wedding, I had to travel 1,080 kilometers by plane to come here. Today, I came easily from Eritrea with my children. It is a wonderful moment. I have no words to explain how I feel. Today was an exciting day. I met my aunties and uncles. I met all of them. The family is really big. We met all the children as well. For about 20 years, we were separated. The war was challenging. It separated brothers. The leaders of the two countries were here to oversee the reopening of the border crossing between these once bitter enemies. The road from Bure area was first to open, which will give landlocked Ethiopia access to the port of Asab. Then followed Zalambesa, once an important trade route between the two countries. And then the most significant announcement yet. Ethiopia's new leader says his country will start the withdrawal of its troops along the contested regions. This will no doubt please Eritrea, which has for so long insisted on this as a precondition for peace talks. Today's development marks another significant milestone in the relationship between these two countries. And as Eritrea and Ethiopia mark the start of a new year, many will be watching to see if this could be the genuine start of a new relationship. Imanuli Gunza, BBC News. So festivities on the ground, but what about the political picture surrounding this latest development? Joining me via Skype from Rome to talk about just that is Ande Bran Georges. He's Ethiopia's former ambassador to Belgium. Thanks for talking to us. Um, so things are moving quite fast, but just how important is this latest development, the border opening? One correction, I'm Eritrea's former ambassador, not Ethiopia's. I think uh, today's uh, reopening of the border at two crossing points represents an important milestone uh, after 20 years of uh, closure. However, there are very significant challenges. This is taking place in a context of uh, political uh, reforms in Ethiopia, but there is no movement in Eritrea. You know, the, the war, which was, of course, unnecessary, senseless, uh, was fought over the border. And now the two leaders are saying the border is not important and they have not talked about the border, which is, of course, uh, a bit strange. Secondly, the no war, no peace situation, the continued occupation of sovereign Eritrean territory in the contested borderlands was used as a pretext to not apply the 1997 ratified constitution, not to limit the indefinite national service that has been going on for the last 20 but, years. But Mr. Ambassador, but Mr. Ambassador, if I may just come in now, I mean, does the, the fact that the Ethiopian Prime Minister has now said that Ethiopian troops will withdraw from this disputed territory, I mean, surely that must mean something? Yes, it is. It's a very important development. But the withdrawal of troops must be within the context of a clearly defined border. When both are saying they have not talked about the border, they don't know. We will have to know which domestic jurisdiction ends where. 
which people in the borderlands would be nationals of Ethiopia, nationals of Eritrea, and to which jurisdiction would they be, under which jurisdiction, jurisdiction would they be administered, etc. In other words, the demarcation of the boundary is a very important issue, which would also delimit the areas of domestic jurisdiction, the identity of the nationals in the border areas, and also they, they, they affect the tax base of the country, which, which people in, on which side of the border are going to pay taxes. And, taxes. and indeed, Mr. Ambassador, I mean, one, you're just listing some of the things that we don't know, but have we got any insight? I mean, one major issue that keeps cropping up when you talk about these uh, agreements between the two countries is the, the issue of conscription into the military, compulsory conscription into the military in Eritrea. With peace now on the horizon, or some people insist that there is now peace between both countries, will this still continue? There is no indication that the indefinite national service would come to an end. Although the, the national security under the pretext of its continued Ethiopian occupation was used as the excuse, now the government is mum. Yes, now that the pretext is removed, uh, the national service should be restored to its uh, legal limits in accordance with the terms of the proclamation. Okay, the Mr. Ambassador, Constitution thanks a lot. Should also be I'm afraid we might we'll just have to leave it there, but I'm sure we will have you back on the program talking about this issue. I was talking there to Anderbran Georges, and he was Eritrea's former ambassador.